So since my last soft modding video did so well, I figured I'd make another one, but this time about modding the original Xbox. So let's get straight into it. So for most of you that have seen my tutorials before, I like including a price point and how much you're going to spend to get the job done here. So the most expensive part of this is obviously going to be getting your original Xbox. If you already have one laying around, this is probably going to cost you in total maybe $15. So I picked up my original Xbox from my local Toy Vault. I bought it for about $60. Uh, if you guys don't have a Toy Vault in your area, I'm sure you can find it on eBay for a cheap price. But uh, next, you're going to need a female USB to original Xbox adapter. You can get this at walmart.com for $6.89. The way it usually works for this is the cheaper the cable, the longer you're going to wait for shipping time because it usually comes from China. I'd recommend just, you know, biting the bullet, spending seven bucks and getting this cable in in roughly a week from today. And... Um, the next thing you're going to need is a USB flash drive. I recommend getting this unbranded one for 512 megabytes. I already grabbed mine here. You see it's green. It's probably blending in with the green screen because your boy likes green. That's a lot of saying greens. Uh, but I grabbed the 512 megabytes because the files we're going to be transferring here, you really don't need anything bigger. So save yourself some money. Grab this for $3.83. Bada bing, bada boom. Lastly, you're going to need a copy of Splinter Cell. It doesn't matter whether you get the original Splinter Cell or the Platinum Hits. I actually got the Platinum Hits version, but if you are just going to grab the original here, it's another $3.12. So if you already have your original Xbox, this is going to cost you roughly $15. Big whoop. Want to fight about it? So I figure while we're on the PC, we can go ahead and grab all the programs we're going to need for later. So we're going to go ahead and need this build version 1.18 of Rocky 5. I'll leave a link for this in the description. This is the soft modding program that's going to do the job here. Um, I already downloaded it, as you can see right here. But once you're on this page, just go ahead and hit download all and wait for it to finish. Next up, we're going to need a file transfer program or an FTP program, really. And you're going to go to WinSCP. Again, I'll leave a link and you're going to go to download and oh cool did it right away and the last thing you're gonna need is explorer 360 beta 6.7 again i'll leave a link for everything and you're just going to download this here okay so once you have this downloaded you're going to right click show in folder i'm going to make a folder on my desktop and call it xbox mod tools you guys can do whatever leave it wherever but this is what i'm going to do I'm going to take all these files here and drag it into that folder. And we're just going to leave it here for later. We'll come back to this after we format our USB hard drive here. So, well, flash drive, I should say. It's not really a hard drive, especially at 500 fucking megabytes. But you're going to take your uh, female USB cable that we got here, plug that into your Xbox, and then we're going to attach our flash drive to it. So let's go ahead and head over to the Xbox and see what happens. So now that you got that connected, what this is going to do, it's going to format our USB hard drive. You don't want to do this on your PC. You want to make sure the Xbox does this and let it do its own thing. So once you have that all connected, go ahead and select memory. And you're going to get a message that says the memory unit you inserted isn't working correctly. It has been erased. That's fine. That's exactly what you want it to be. So what this has done is already formatted it to whatever program the Xbox needs to be to make it run. So just hit OK. And we are going to take our hard drive back out and we're going to plug it back into the PC. So now that we have that plugged in, you can see here, removable disk E is blank. You can't really do anything with it. That's fine. If it asks you to format it, don't do it, leave it alone. And we're going to go ahead and just exit out of that. And now we'll deal with those programs that we just downloaded. So we will start with this uh, build file here. I'm going to right click it and go to extract to. This will make a subfolder here with everything we need. Open it up. And we have another folder here that says Xbox Soft Modding Tools. We're going to right click and extract to again. And this will create another folder that we need. So once you're in here, you're going to see Soft Mod Package. 
and you're going to have a list of games here, like I was telling you earlier, Tony Hawk, Pro Skater 4, uh, Splinter Cell Pow, Splinter Cell NTSC, 007. So since we're doing this with Splinter Cell, I'm going to do the Splinter Cell NTSC version, and I'm just going to extract here. This is going to create a UData file with... I can't even explain what kind of program this is in here, but it's all the information from the game. You're also going to need this uh, soft mod here. Just right click and extract here as well. It should add it into the UData folder. And sure as shit, it definitely did. The next thing we're going to need is open up the Xbox Mod Tools folder we created again. And we're going to open up Explorer 360 this time. Uh, just do extract to... Uh, we'll just do extract here. And you see Explorer 360 here. We're going to go ahead and open that. Go ahead and select drive, open, hard drive or mem card. And this is our USB flash drive here. And we're going to drag these files from earlier straight onto that. We're just going to wait. I can't move anything. It seems like my screen's a little frozen right here. But you can see the bar moving in the background. And now it's done. So we are currently done with what we need to do to the USB flash drive. So go ahead and hit drive and close. So the next thing we're going to do that I recommend doing is burning a disc for some Xbox extras. Uh, what this is going to do is... Uh, once you soft mod your console, you're not going to have the original sound effects that are on the Xbox dashboard. This will help reinstall that. This is optional. You don't need to do this, but I'm going to do this. So I'll leave something down below so you can skip this part if you don't want to do it. But again, I recommend doing it. So you're going to go into build, build. You're going to go into extras disk. And you're going to have an ISO right here. So I already have image burn up. We'll just go ahead and open it. Right, right image file to disk. Create image file from disk. Right. F uh, yeah, I think we're going to do the first one here. I don't burn disk off inside to think about it. So uh, destination, that's fine. We're going to go ahead and go to file. I, I, might, I wonder if I can just drag it in. I can. So just drag that file into there, uh, writing speed, uh, we're just going to do 2.4x, and current media DVD RL, this image doesn't need to go on a double, it will fit on a DVD, just fine, would you like to continue anyways, just hit yes, that's just the disc I had laying around. So we're going to go ahead and let this write to a disc, let it do its thing, and we'll come back when it's finished. Shouldn't take too long though. All right, so I figured while that's burning, we'll go ahead and continue on with the tutorial here. So you're going to go ahead and take the USB flash drive out of your computer and insert it back into your Xbox. From here, you're going to go into memory, controller 2, with this little mempack symbol here. And you're going to see that we have the splinter cell file and the Xbox soft modding tool. So to copy this over to the hard drive, which we're going to have to do, just go right, select splinter cell, and do copy and you're going to copy over to the hard drive and you're going to go back and you're going to do the same thing with the soft modding tool so just click it press copy and over to hard disk now from here just to double check we're going to go over to the hard drive and just verify that we have I guess you guys can tell that uh, my disc is done burning. That's the sound the image burn makes when it's done, folks. Scared the shit out of me. Anyways, you can see that the uh, soft modding tool in Splinter Cell is all done here. Just go ahead and press B. Press B. And now we're going to insert our copy of Splinter Cell into the Xbox. So once you do that, you're going to notice, obviously, you're going to have a game playing. Just go ahead and let it boot up. I'm not sure if that's loud or not. Just go ahead and hit start. You're going to hit start game. 
and you're gonna see you have a profile called Linux. Go ahead and click that. And select. Now that that's done, you're gonna be greeted with this. Thank you for choosing the Xbox soft modding tool. If you have any feedback or bugs, please let me know via the Xbox Homebrew Discord. Thank you. So just hit A to continue. And it's gonna start doing its thing. So it's currently in the process of being soft modded. So I'm gonna go ahead and just let this do its thing and I'll get back to you once there's something relevant to talk about. Okay, so now that we get a message, your EEPROM backup will be placed in E Backups EEPROM. Copy the EEPROM folder to your PC once the dashboard is loaded and keep it safe. Your EEPROM, I want to say, I'm not a total genius on all this, but this is like a backup of your hard drive, like the, uh, the, the key to your hard drive. Like if you ever wanted to swap or make a backup or anything, that's what your EEPROM necessarily belongs to. So I'm just going to hit I understand. The EEPROM bin is required to create a new hard drive for the system. In the case your Xbox hard drive dies, you need the EEPROM bin file to create a new locked drive. See what I mean? This is why it's important to back up and keep safe. I understand. Well, that, well that's you all soft modded. Well, that's you all soft modded. See? I told you it was a painless procedure. I don't remember you telling me shit. But now I need to restart the Xbox. So when you see the green flubber animation, take the disc out. So basically, like it says, this is going to restart, and then we're going to take the disc out after it has restarted. I guess this is the green flubber. So I'm just going to go ahead and take the disc out here. And I close the drive back up. Yep, so it's just going to keep doing its thing here. Moving XBE files, patching, backing up the Xbox EEPROM. EEPROM, what up, AA Ron? So this is probably going to be a little bit while it installs everything. Probably a lot of on and off like you can see here. Actually, it might be done. <gasps> That's it, folks. Congratulations. You have a soft modded Xbox. It's all done here. So uh, one thing that we can do while we're here is go to, let's go to system, go to skins, and hmm, we'll go with the default. And we'll just hit B. So I got the uh, disc that I burned here. I'm just going to pop it in. It's also worth noting that when you look at your Xbox, it's not going to have the standard green light anymore. Maybe orange and or red. So don't be alarmed. That is part of the soft modding process. Okay, so now we'll figure it out if I fucked up this burn. All right, so the disc seems to be working. So what we're going to do here... Uh, there we go. Couldn't get it to work for a second. So we're going to go to dashboards. Microsoft dashboards. Stock MS dash. And we're going to install. So what this is going to do, it's going to bring back the classic sounds that you usually hear in the background. To me, it kind of sounds like there's just people talking on a radio and shit in the background. Some CIA shit going on. Install the audio. Yes. And uh, yeah, just give it more of a better feel because it's, it's honestly pretty quiet when you boot it up. So again, this is totally optional. You don't have to do this, but I figured go big or go home, right? gotta love the wording in this that's the wait that's the ms dashboard installed all right well it's good news that it's done right so one other thing that i just want to show you on here if you go to applications there are other things you can install dvd to xbox dvdx this will allow you to basically you know pop in an xbox and burn it straight to the hard drive and stuff like that usually when you click it it should tell you uh what it does i'm not going to go through any of that just to kind of keep this video a little shorter so let's go ahead and go back to the menu so the last thing we're going to do here, see you have copy disk to hard drive. 
Uh, go to B. I'm gonna go to Applications, and you're gonna see NKP Patcher Settings. So we're just gonna go ahead and open that. We're gonna go to EEPROM. We're gonna go to Advanced Features. Hard Drive. Change EEPROM Hard Drive Key. This process will unlock your hard drive. So what this does is if you ever want to upgrade your hard upgrade your hard drive in the future, it'll make it a lot easier without having to know the key that's available for this crap, if that makes sense. For most of you that have done JTAG or RGH things, you know what I mean. If you've ever tried swapping any of your hard drives, you know what I'm talking about. So I'm just going to go ahead and hit yes. The master password will be set to team assembly. Just hit okay. And we're going to let it do its thing again. So uh, I'll come back to it when it's done. Okay, it's all set. So let's see if we can go ahead, exit, left trigger, right trigger, plus black back. Oh, would you look at that? I totally forgot that there was a black button on this. It's so weird. Not used to that anymore. And it still didn't retain the skin that I put on there. I wonder if there's a, maybe I need to hit save or something like that. But whatever, uh, the last, very last thing that we're gonna have to do is copy over our information from our EEPROM to our PC to make sure if those files ever get lost, we have a way of bringing them back to the Xbox so they're not, you know, permanently gone. So let's go ahead and get back to the PC and then we'll wrap up this video. All right, so to finish this all up, we're gonna go into our folder we created earlier. Uh, you're gonna run the WinSCP file. I already did the setup, so I already have the application already, but you're just gonna do that setup. Once you have that done, Go ahead and open it up and it's going to ask you for some login information so you're going to select ftp the host name is the ip of your xbox which is displayed on your home screen so that will be for me the default username and password is xbox and xbox go ahead and hit login and you'll see that I got right in here. So what I'm going to do is just navigate. So I'll explain as well. The left side is your PC. The right side is your Xbox. So you're going to go into your E folder. And you're going to want to make a copy of this backup folder here. So I'm just going to... Uh, let's see. Go to my desktop here. My folder, Xbox mod tools, I'm just gonna save it right there. So we're just gonna go ahead and right click it and download. It says to desktop, that's not where I want it. We're gonna go to desktop, Xbox mod tools and hit okay and okay. So now if we minimize this, you'll see that in our folder, we have a backup folder now. If you're ever worried about what you did with your EEPROM and completely altering your console, you can always go back and you can actually see your default bin, uh, what it was before we changed it. You can also go to Xbox Info and it will tell you all the information that it just recently changed it to. So as long as you have this on lock and you're holding on to it, should be all set. All right, so now you guys can enjoy your soft modded Xbox. If you guys like tutorials like this, and maybe you want to see me make some more videos of adding emulators onto this bad boy, just leave a comment down below, drop a like, maybe a subscribe, and let me know what kind of content I should cover next. I'll see you guys later.